Greetings! Today a retro teardown and a what a fantastic item. Uh, you can see it cost me £5 including the film and I got it on a car boot sale a while back. This was waiting for a teardown video for a while. And what it is, it's a Polaroid instant camera. Uh, it's a relic of the past that, um, you know, uh, back in the day, that was the thing. That If you wanted a, uh, a picture straight away, after taking it this was the only thing that could deliver and this relic of the past will I think be very interesting teardown uh, mainly because of the optics and because of the cassettes that it comes with the cassettes are quite unusual in in itself because they contain a battery and we'll go through that um, in detail in a moment so if you can imagine that the film the cassette is uh, just sitting here like so flat and so and this is the lens um, so this will be coming here there will be some sort of mirror some more lenses so it'll be interesting to have a look how they've done it so let's have a overlook um, on the thing um, classic Polaroid the type 600 uh, device um, the flap opens we've got a massive uh, flash over here big uh, xenon tube that is still working and underneath we've got uh, two lenses a little bit big so I'm getting out of uh, out of camera view but we've got two lenses one for the viewfinder one for the actual film this is the actual eye of the camera and here we've got uh, a little slidey thing that uh, changes between close-up and uh, distance mode 1.2 meter to infinity and 0.4 to 1.2 meters uh, when you select the close-up mode it basically what it puts another rubbish plastic lens in front of everything um, it does the same thing for the viewfinder and the camera so you can see the same thing uh, in what you're shooting uh, this window here is a interesting arrangement so if you can see there is like um, diagonal stripes on there and those can be changed over here this is some photo uh, resistor in there and as I change this you can see the stripes disappear I'm changing the brightness to maximum but if I move it a little bit more the stripes become thicker and thicker so they put through a little bit less uh, light and that's used to uh, compensate the shutter speed inside the uh, inside the camera okay here we have uh, a door that you can open with a flap and there's the film cassette sitting inside you can see it's a Polaroid 600 uh, type of thing and if we press the shutter I would think oh, there we go. it spits out uh, a picture now the film I've got is uh, all expired you can see the all the funny corners and whatnot um, the film actually expired let's have a look October 2005 it says on the 11 years expired so no wonder it's uh, no longer performing the way it should let's have a look at the film cassette itself here is how they used to come um, in a little box that's uh, hermetically sealed it's it's cardboard but it's got um, you know metalized lining and when it's closed shut it's um, it's actually sealed you've got a stack of You've got a blank sheet like this, then you've got a stack of uh, pictures, uh, films, prints, whatever those are, um, and you've got another black sheet like that. And when you first insert the sheet into the camera, it automatically spits out the first cardboard and it's ready to accept to take a picture. When I first got it, because I didn't have one before, I was, well, I could see a flash. I know that there is a battery inside. But I couldn't see where would you put the battery and it didn't occur to me until quite later that the cassette itself is actually a battery there is a battery on, on the bottom of this and I've got another one here that I've taken apart so I've taken the little springy thing that pushes the film up and here is a battery and this battery mind you this is 11 years expired right um, it says mercury free there is a flat cell inside so let's grab a meter and 
there we go 5.7 volts just under 6 volts so this is uh yeah it's a it's a perfectly usable battery um 11, 11 years after the expiry date so well done polaroid um i'm wondering what's uh what's inside the packet so let's rip it open and see what's uh what's inside now, i'm not sure what sort of chemistry is this and how many cells but presumably there will be more than one cell in there uh, because I can't think of anything that would give you 5 volts out of a single cell. Uh, but okay, we've got... This is just sitting in a, in a packet with just plastic film on top of it. Um, and here we've got a battery contact, one of them. And at the bottom is the second one. So do we dare to open this? That's not going too well. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's all yucky inside. Okay, so we've got one layer and the second layer. So we've got typical battery arrangement. We've got one layer with not sure what that is but uh, then we've got a membrane with uh, with what appears to be some sort of electrolyte and paper and rather and here is another membrane and exactly same arrangement underneath so how many cells are like that are there it will be three three cells I think or maybe four nothing special I think those are just you know zinc you know the heavy-duty type of chemistry zinc uh, batteries uh, carbon zinc or whatever those uh, those are but yeah this is junk now so I'm just going to dispose of this before I make a huge mess and on to the camera uh, how do we get inside that's the mystery because I cannot see any obvious screws or any points of entry so the best my best guess is over here that those flaps seem to be removable so let's get a screwdriver and pop this open well yeah okay I think that will reveal something it's not a screw but a hinge this hinge that I can dislodge now there we go uh, one and two so now I've got this dislodged what next maybe on the back no I don't think there are screws underneath okay Looking at the construction, it would seem that the entire thing will just slide out. And that's what I think should happen. But let's, uh, let's remove the film cassette. You can see there is still some film in there, which is now ruined. Uh, but uh, shouldn't worry about that. Um, obvious place under the sticker let's have a look no this is pleasantly challenging okay maybe under the Polaroid picture nope oh hold on it delaminated so there is more underneath nope Okay, this seems to be popping off. Okay, this popped off. Maybe this will come off. Ah, I've got something. Okay, we are getting somewhere. So, the front face, 
here we have the close up and distance thing which is two separate moving pieces of plastic and those put put the little plastic in front of the rest of the contraption I'm not sure if this even does anything I'm looking through this little thing and oh no this doesn't do anything it just rounds up uh, puts a little line in the view of what you're seeing it doesn't actually change the uh, optical parameters but this one this one yeah this one does something it's uh, a little bit uh, lensy okay uh, right then we've got this comes off which which hasn't got anything interesting and we are beginning to see all sorts of complicated things so here here we've got a very unusual flat flex cable that goes into a very unusual flat flex connector uh, I want to get at it uh, gently so let me think a little bit more okay I think I'm getting somewhere so there is a latch over here but if I just undo it the whole frame pops out and that has some plastics and we've got first a lens and here is one of them this is the is that one lens or yes that's one lens it's plastic there we go oh it's a very concave lens so if you have want to have a look through it would make a relatively good macro lens it zooms in quite well on a close-up object but okay that's a keeper to my lens collection now we've got some more stuff sitting in there and I need to figure out how to get at it oh I think now brute force should Take this whole thing out. Now there is one thing left in there, which is here, and seems to be a flat flex going into the um, flash lamp assembly. So I need to dismantle that first. Whoa, look at this cap. 350 SV, 409 microfarad. Oh, that's a really nice cap. Whoa, and that's a big bang. Lucky I didn't touch that. Okay, what have we got here? Is that just a power connector? Right, let's disconnect the flat flexes from here. That's one and that's two. So there's quite a bit of circuitry in here. Well, we've got 350 volts, 409 microfarad. What an odd capacity. It's not. Uh, 470, 390, 409. Uh, that's the first time I see something like this. But anyways, um, the flash assembly and just some miscellaneous circuitry. We'll try to figure out what else is happening in here. But I suspect this is only um, the flash circuit. Um, or maybe something else. I don't know. Let's see. Let's investigate later. And now we are inside, or rather we've got the contraption 
outside. Right, let's have a look. The viewfinder seems to be coming off and in here we have one lens. One lens, a little bit unusual because it's got that shape. It's all plastic, they're not um, actually glass lenses. which I guess it's uh, sufficient for the sort of uh, quality that you were getting on this. But um, it's got, uh, yeah, this sort of shape. I'm not sure why they had to do it, uh, but okay. Yeah, that's one of the things to keep. Here is the, the slidey thing with different uh, stripes that I was showing you before. Will that come off? There we go. And that basically, depending on how far you move it in, it will put thicker and thicker black stripes in front of this and what this appears to be... Well, there's another circle in here with, with even more uh, slidey things, so I couldn't see that and that's being able to adjust this from the outside. So maybe that's a factory preset, or maybe this is getting actuated by something. I'm not too sure right now. Um, okay, we can pop this off. Here is the wheel with, again, as you turn it, it's got thinner stripes and thicker stripes on the other end, and it's, mm, it's got a gradicle from one to nine. Okay. So here we have a plastic part and here we have a black part and here we have a green part that uh, those two actually should come together like this and it's this what is this doing? Are those filters? And is this trying to do some dual tone measurement of... And maybe open up? No, it doesn't seem like it will open up. It was just sitting together like this. So would this be trying to make a dual tone measurement uh, type of thing? I'm not too sure. But here underneath, it appears like we've got two photo cells and one measures through the black thing, which probably is some sort of infrared filter, and the green thing, which is uh, another filter. So maybe that's mildly interesting. I'll put those to the side. And then we've got the big lens over here, which we should be able to pop out. This is the main camera lens and there you go, that's your Polaroid vision. That goes to the side, and we have the shutter in there. Some metal part, interestingly, um, where everything else is made out of plastic. We've got uh, an actuator for the shutter. Oh, I think I've actuated some. Oh, I've opened the shutter. Oh, wow, check this out. So, as the shutter flips, you can see the action happening in here, but also look at the uh, look at the photo cells over here, and those are shattered as well, which is quite interesting. So before I was thinking I'm looking at a photo cell, but I was not. It was the shutter that uh, appeared has got that sort of look and a line in, in, in the middle, but uh, it's just two pieces of metal that slide through uh, doing something. 
So what's underneath? Diode in Sims, I can see on the other side. Just a plastic package diode. Okay. All right, we've got a massive mirror, mirror in here and you can see myself in the corner of the mirror and should be able to see the camera. No, it's probably too much of an angle. Everything is uh, inside is has got those stripes, those grooves, and that's to reduce the reflection. Oh wow, and we've even got some ICs on the on the flex. So here we've got the motor uh, that would be driving through a set of gears and you know spit out the cassette uh, film and also increment the little counter uh, as it would and this flat flex connector over here um, this is just a set of switches um, that depending what's happening and how many films you used and every time it increments those are just little contacts on here um, that's uh, yeah that uh, send some sort of logic information um, this was probably open close switch or something um, and this is also connected directly to the battery, this wire around going here. And that goes to the bat uh, here, so that supplies power for the rest of the circuitry. Uh, but as far as that, uh, there isn't anything else in this part. There's just a couple of gears and then that's about it. Let's look at this. And over here we have a flex PCB with that diode, that sensor diode and a rather thick uh, rather thick uh, shutter coil if you think about shutters in modern cameras uh, yeah, the, the miniature uh, compared to this this is rather huge, uh, but okay let's see if we can Take this out. Okay, that's an interesting part, electromagnet. So you can apply voltage to it and that will pull the metal pin inside. So yeah, that can be reused in something. Those are cool things to keep. And let me get at this module. There we go. I will look at the shutter assembly in a moment. But here, this is very interesting. So we've got uh, we've got uh, a PCB with a date code uh, 99. Sixteen ninety-nine. So sixteenth week, uh, nineteen ninety-nine. And yeah, it's a. Uh, it's an unusual flex, it looks like uh, not copper or maybe it's a tint copper, let's have a look. No, actually I think it's made out of something else. It's. Uh, I'm trying to scratch it to see the red copper underneath but it's not having it. It's. Uh, it seems maybe it's all tin or aluminium or some other. Uh, some other metal. But here is. Oh, that's rather beautiful. Here is that photo cell. And we've got Texas Institute two te Ti chips, two six zero A and two six one A. I wonder what those could be. And here is the close-up of the PCB. And you can see some parts are covered in green, some are silver. But uh, yeah, the, where it's silver it's exposed metal. So I'm not too sure even what that metal is. And here is the rest of the circuitry soldered onto it. And on the other side, we've got the two little dip packages. 
one of them TI logo 261A94 and 260A with 95 also TI logo and after a quick look the only thing I was uh, able to find was people asking on forums what those are because they've come across those as well so no not uh, no luck right now uh, I suspect those might be custom parts for Polaroid made by TI and here is uh, the photodiode which is rather pretty so let me let's zoom in a little bit more Look at that. I'm freehanding this, so excuse the shaky hand, but you can see the the die inside. Whether it's a diode or a photoresistor, I'm not sure. Judging by the by the stripes on there, I think it might be a photoresistor um, in a in a little package like this. But um, we'll be able to find out later on. We can always measure it and see how it behaves. But okay, let's move on from this. Here is the shutter assembly. That's probably the last thing that's left over here. There's just a few tabs that are holding it in place. And they've got a few notches on here for the spring so they can uh, maybe adjust the tension in the factory and here is some metal bit let's just cast something and aluminum maybe some sort of alloy and I'm not sure what they've got this in here this is probably just to give it a little bit of a uh, little bit of mechanical force on return to make sure when it's spring loaded it's, it's got a little bit of gravity and here we have the shutter consists of three is that plastic yeah it's 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 a plastic shutter with three different sets of cutouts and all of that was actuated by that um, all of this was actuated by that uh, um, little electromagnet this one here and through a set of uh, levers and and whatnot over here uh, this was moving in opposite directions so it was causing all sorts of patterns and and whatnot okay I guess they they had it all worked out how it was meant to be but there you go that's the shutter rather big okay let's look at the rest of this stuff so here we have a cover made out of very thin and flimsy plastic that's coming off and we have the mirror Obviously, even though this is reflective, this is the back side of the mirror. But the front of the mirror will be spotless. And it is uh, really nice quality mirror. I could even use that for shooting videos. Ah. It's a really, really good quality mirror, actually.
Okay. And what else have we got in here? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I think that's all there is to it. And uh, there isn't much more happening. It's just uh, just a case. As I said, it's got all sorts of grooves around and little bits and bobs to reduce the reflection. A counter that counts to 10, it seems. The motor. That's sitting in here somehow. Oh, there we go. They've done a quick and dirty way of connecting all the power, basically. The, this bare wire has been pushed pushed in into those little pins or tabs and those basically are quite sharp so they just bite into the cable so it makes for an easy assembly and this is basically a, a switch that contacts everything the same for this cable you can see it's not been soldered it's just basically a press fit and it uh, gives a really good connection and it's reliable so that's an easy way to do it and here is a gear reduction for the motor so it's able to uh, push out all the torque required to uh, pull the film out and, and whatnot so yeah that's that's what it is so in case you wondered that's what's in the Polaroid camera. Now over here we've got the electronics assembly. Now I'm being extra cautious with that cap because yeah that's 400 farad uh, at 350 volts. Uh, that would hurt definitely. And we've got the xenon flash tube over here behind some silicon uh, silicon shield temperature resistance and yeah obviously electric isolation because this uh, the metal case over here that's aluminium this is actually where they discharge the, the high voltage to ionize the gas and there is a high voltage transform uh, here uh, or coil and that goes inside and that's either wrapped around the, the flash tube or it uh, goes directly onto the metal case so yeah the, you, you basically want to isolate this uh, just in case apart from the massive cap there's just a few transistors another uh, another cap that's probably to generate the uh, 350 volts uh, for the cap and that's about it is there anything on the downside? No, there is absolutely nothing on the other side, just a single sided job. All through hole, we've got an unusual coil and it wasn't, one layer wasn't enough, so they've got like four or five layers of, it's just basically a whole bobbin of uh, wire. And there's the other cap, oh, this is a Rubicon cap, okay. So, they didn't skim on quality and they're all good components. We've got Texas Instruments uh, custom parts and um, Rubicon caps in, in, in the thing. This one's Rubicon as well. Probably all of them are. Yeah. So, yeah, good, uh, good quality parts. It was a good camera. It did uh, what it was supposed to do, unfortunately. Uh, it's all well, maybe fortunately uh, the times moved on and it, yeah nowadays we don't see those anymore oh well at least you get to see what's inside one in case you wondered but i think that's it for this video i don't think i can take it any further apart i'm gonna keep this and see if i can get it to flash on com on demand um just for kicks but yeah um as far as this that's uh, that's it so thank you very much for staying with me on this and uh, hope you enjoyed it if you did please do give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe for more random stuff for the time being take care